if you're struggling with anxiety, brain fog, or fatigue, and your labs are normal, it may not be in your head. It might be something that's coming from your gut. I want to talk about the gut-brain axis. If you've not heard of that, it's okay. We're going to talk about it in detail here and give you some of the symptoms that are associated with it, also give you a little bit of treatments, and then in the next video, we'll give you diet, supplements, and other things like that to help with you. So what is the gut-brain axis? Well, most of you don't know that your gut is a second brain, and it is communicating via the vagus nerve, hormones, and neurotransmitters with the brain 24-7. There's an ongoing communication that's happening that allows us to adapt to our environment. And that's great when everything's working well, but when it's not, this becomes a problem for us. Things like anxiety, brain fog, fatigue, sleep problems, stress or not managing stress very well, depression, anxiety, all these things can be related to your gut through the gut-brain axis. Now, what is causing this gut-brain axis to be a problem? I want to go through a few of these things uh, and look at some of the root causes of these dysfunctions. Because often we're just told to take a pill and uh, we're told that if you just take this pill, you'll be fine. And they're not really getting to the core problem. If you don't get to the core problem, all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on it. Or even worse, you're putting a sticker over an oil light. Because something worse may be at play there. And if you're not addressing the root cause, you're covering up the symptom while not solving the underlying problem. Now, some of the things that can cause a gut problem are things like antibiotics. Antibiotics are needed. Don't get me wrong. At times, you need to take them. But they often will destroy good and bad bacteria. In the gut, you have trillions of bacteria. Many of them are what are considered beneficial bacteria. And if we are killing them with an antibiotic to try to get rid of an infection, often we, it takes time to rebuild that. And what happens is many of the bad bacteria, things like strep and staph and E. coli, which are needed in small amounts, will rebuild faster. Now, unfortunately, these types of bacteria do release endotoxins. And these endotoxins can become toxic for us. They can get into our bloodstream if there's a leaky gut and they can create systemic inflammation. That also can get into the brain as well through the blood circulation. So we wanna make sure we're having balance and antibiotics destroy that balance. So it's not that you don't need antibiotics at times, it's just that you need probiotics and need prebiotics to restore that balance once you do have to take something like that. The other things that can create a problem with this are stress. An ongoing chronic stress from your lifestyle, whether it's a relationship, whether it's work, whether it's not having enough free time or not having enough downtime, this chronic stress or even stress from a chronic illness or stress from injuries that you've had creating pain all the time. This unmanaged, unchecked stress can create a dysfunction in the gut-brain axis. It will decrease the tone of the vagus nerve. It will change your neurotransmitters. It will also increase cortisol, which then can further complicate the problem by suppressing digestion, by um, imbalancing a lot of your other hormones and a lot of your neurotransmitters. So. Stress, if it's not in check or kept in check, will create a problem, and this can lead to a gut-brain axis problem, leading to some of these other symptoms that we talked about. Another one is Im improper sleep or not getting proper sleep. Now, if you have a gut-brain axis problem that is causing sleep problems, we've got to figure out why that's happening. A lot of times we are not getting enough sleep because we think we have to do all these other things or we are not allowing ourselves to go to bed at a good time. It's important that we have consistent sleep. 
in order for us to have a healthy gut diversity and a healthy gut brain axis. Sugars and processed foods are another major disruptor of the gut microbiome. When we are eating sugars all the time, this throws off our blood sugar, which then is going to throw off cortisol, which is also going to lower the diversity of the microbiome, and it's also going to imbalance us in the other hormones. So eating junk food all the time, not eating healthy choices of food is going to lead to a disruption in your gut microbiome. This gut microbiome is going to have a complicating effect. If this is in a disarray for long enough, there is more inflammation that can develop. Once that inflammation develops, you have a potential for a leaky gut, which is a gapping of the wall of the intestine, which, which then allows for things to go across the membrane into the inside of us. This could be toxins, it could be inflammation, it could be microbes, it could be parasites. Once that gets across the membrane, you have a, an immune system that gets engaged. When you have those become engaged, then you have a potential for other problems like autoimmune conditions. So getting rid of those things that are disrupting the microbiome is going to be imperative. Another one that's going to cause problems is trauma. When we have injuries, when we have emotional traumas, these create a disruption and put us into a kind of a fight flight. Our body was not meant to be in a fight flight for very long. It was supposed to be short term, but many of us are living in a state of fight flight all the time. This is causing a disruption in the balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. If you were in sympathetic dominance, you're going to have problems like elevated heart rate, decreased digestion, your gallbladder is essentially going to shut down it's, and you're not going to detox and you're going to have sleep issues as well as um, uh, imbalances in your cortisol. So avoiding traumas, obviously, and then addressing those traumas through programs, which we're going to talk about in the next video, will help you with this whole gut brain axis. It is the tone of the vagus nerve that will determine whether or not you're getting good communication between the brain and body, our brain and gut. So we need to look at that and we need to look at the gut in particular, if we're going to get to the brain issues that we're having. So we'll, we'll talk about some breath tools here, breath work. And then next video, we're actually going to be talking about some supplements and some other tools that you can do to help. So what are some breath techniques that we can do to help our vagus nerve to get into better tone when we're having a situation like anxiety or depression, or we're having some brain fog, you can stimulate the vagus nerve. So a couple of things that you can do gargling and you can do humming and singing. All three of these will actually stimulate the vagus nerve. You can also do breathing techniques. There's a couple of them. The box breathing that we've mentioned in other videos, that's where you will take a breath in through your nose, counting to four, holding it for four, blowing it out for four, for a count of four, and then holding it again for a count of four. And you're doing this in a rhythmic fashion here. What this is doing is setting the tone for your body. And even though you might be in an anxious state, your heart rate might be elevated, you can start to regulate that through this process. And you can do this several times and you'll actually see it can lower your heart rate. It can also lower your blood pressure. Another one is called the physiological sigh. This is where you'll take two breaths in through your nose, one long breath in, and then at the very end, you're gonna take another breath and try to get as much breath in there as possible. And then you're going to blow it out through your mouth. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. <sighs> Doing this a few times will also help to lower your anxiety, lower your blood pressure and lower your heart rate. So try a few of these. Another major tool is going to be cold plunges. You want to start slow with this, but maybe 30 seconds 
You can either do this in a, a cold bath and you also could do it in, under a cold shower. I would recommend with the shower first. This is something I do. This, uh, when you're done with your getting all washed up, uh, turn it all the way to cold for 30 seconds and just kind of dance underneath that water. Now, this will stimulate your heart. But after, once, you, once you've learned to control that, and, and this is where you want to practice some of the box breathing, but after you've learned to control some of that, you can actually get major benefit after you get out of the cold shower. This will release adrenaline and will release dopamine. And this dopamine rises for probably about four hours. So trying a uh, cold plunge or getting in, in the water, obviously if you have any heart issues, you don't want to try this. You want to talk to your doctor about this. But if you don't have a heart issue and you have anxiety or you just have occasionally racing heart, um, then you can use something like this to help to tone that vagus nerve. Now, if this is interesting, we'll be talking about more tools in a second video. I encourage you to uh, like and follow this and then you'll, you'll be able to get to the next video. We'll talk about tools, more tools and supplements as well as diet, things that you can do to actually help with this whole gut brain axis and getting after some of those symptoms that you're dealing with. So comment gut reset if this makes sense to you and this is something that interests you and I'll see you in the next video.